The basic concept of relativity is that motion can only be measured relative to other objects and not in any absolute sense. Another basic concept of relativity is that the laws of physics are unaffected by relative motion such that all inertial observers experience the exact same laws of physics. One of the results of this is that you never see yourself moving, but you do see the world moving by you. Relativity has profound effects on our understanding of space and time, making it one of the most significant discoveries of modern science. The first proposed theory of relativity was described by Galileo Galilei in 1632. Its basic concept was that the fundamental laws of physics are the same for all inertial frames. He also considered space and time as being absolutes. One of the shortcomings of Galilean relativity was the failure to consider the speed of light. This was because Galileo lacked the ability to measure the speed of light, even though he tried. When this shortcoming was dealt with, the result was the modern theory of relativity. Newton's laws of motion were first published in Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica in 1687. It was based in part on Galilean relativity. It is also foundational to all of physics. His three laws are the law of inertia, the law of acceleration, and the law of action-reaction. The law of inertia states that objects in motion stay in straight-line motion unless acted on by a force. When a force is applied to an object, its acceleration is inversely proportional to its mass. The law of action reaction is that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, such that total momentum is conserved, such that objects of the same mass push apart at the same speed. Objects of unequal mass are pushed apart such that the smaller one goes faster. James Maxwell lived from 1831 to 1879. He developed the statistical means of describing the kinetic theory of gases called the Maxwell distribution. He made the first true color photograph and he showed light to be electromagnetic waves. The four equations known as Maxwell's equations mathematically describes electromagnetism and electromagnetic waves, that is, light. This mathematically produces the speed of light in a vacuum from the electromagnetic properties of free space called permeativity and permeability. This helped lead Einstein to his conclusion that the speed of light is constant for all observers. Luminous ether was a theoretical medium in which light was thought to propagate. It was generally accepted in the 19th century. The idea was that light propagated through the ether like sound and ear. The Michelson-Morley experiment was an experiment intended to detect the ether. It was conducted by Albert Michelin and Edward Morley in 1887. It used a split light beam sent in 90 degrees in an attempt to measure the small variations in light travel time in different directions caused by the Earth's motion through the ether. The experiment failed to produce the expected results. This forced a rethink of light propagation theory, eventually leading to the abandonment of luminous ether. The first proposed solution is known as the Lorentz contraction. It is similar to length contraction of special relativity, but described as an electromagnetic effect. The degree of length contraction exactly counters the expected variation in the light travel time. It was independently developed by George Fitzgerald and Hendrik Lorenz. It kept the concept of luminous ether, but described it has an electrodynamic effect resulting from motion through the ether. However, it was considered an ad hoc explanation for the failure of Michelson and Morley. It was a forerunner of special relativity and helped lead to its development. Special Relativity is published by Albert Einstein in 1905. It deals with the special case where gravity can be ignored, resulting in its name. Gravity was later incorporated into the theory of general relativity. It has two basic assumptions. The first is that the observation of physical phenomena are the same for all inertial observers. The second is that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all inertial observers. That is, it is the same in all directions regardless of the velocity of the source or the observer. How assumption 2 can be true is shown by a space-time diagram. It shows the relationship between inertial reference frames, such as observer S prime is moving with a velocity of V in relation to S. The superposition has the axis of S prime tilted such that the slope of the time axis is tilted is C over V and the slope of the space axis is V over C. The space axis of observer X prime moving relative to observer X is tilted. Observers X and X prime each see the same point at different times. As a result, X prime sees the light cone pass two points at the same time. 
while observer X sees the light cone pass the same points at different times. Relativistic length contraction is a foreshortening of the length of an object in the direction of relative motion. At normal relative speeds, the effect is too small to see. Here is a space-time diagram showing relativistic length contraction. The effect is caused by a tilting relationship between two frames of reference in space-time. The yellow area is a light cone. The black lines are the space and time axes of the S reference frame, and the blue line is the time axis of the S prime reference frame. The purple line is the space axis of a ship in reference frame S prime. In reference frame S prime, the light cone reaches both ends of the ship at the same time, but they don't in reference frame S. Observer S is looking at both ends of a ship at different points in the frame S prime timeline. As a result, the forward end of the ship has not moved as far as the trailing end, so the ship is foreshortened to observer S. Furthermore, the observer in frame S prime sees frame S objects with the same length contraction. The concept of time dilation is based largely on a clock with a pulse of light going between two mirrors, where the round trip time is a unit of time. When the clock is in motion, the light pulse has further to travel, and because the speed of light is constant, it therefore takes more time for the light pulse to make the round trip. This translates to the formula for time dilation due to relative motion. General relativity is an extension of special relativity into the general case of non-inertial reference frames, resulting in a theory of gravity that extends and corrects Newtonian gravitation. Gravitation results from a space-time distortion caused by the presence of a mass, like placing a weight on a rubber sheet. The mathematics of both are basically the same. To date, it has passed every experimental test devised for it, making it one of the best verified theories in physics. Here is a two-dimensional visualization of the space-time distortion. The presence of matter bends space-time, and this bending is what is interpreted as gravity. One of the effects of general relativity is gravitational time dilation. This is the slowing of time by a gravitational field. However, because the gravitational constant is so small, it takes a large mass with a small radius to produce significant time dilation. Using atomic clocks, it is possible to detect the effect on Earth. This involves identical atomic clocks in Greenwich, England, and Boulder, Colorado. The one in Greenwich, England ticks 5 microseconds per year slower. According to general relativity, both clocks are right in their respective frames of reference. The basic concept of relativity theory is that all motion is relative. Relativity theory was first described by Galileo, but he kept absolute space and time. Newton's laws of motion built on Galilean relativity. James Maxwell showed light to be electromagnetic waves. Luminous ether was a theoretical medium in which light was thought to propagate. In the Michelson-Morley experiment tried to detect the ether, but failed. This eventually led to the development of special relativity, and expanding special relativity led to general relativity.